Thank you for those that, uh, by the grace of God, knew that we were not here last weekend and you prayed for us. Um, I've been to South Africa a couple of times, but I've never been to Pretoria. I even did not know where it is. I thought if you get to Johannesburg, you're going to get another flight so that you're going to Pretoria. But hiko tu hapo. Ni hapo dhika tu. Hapo, hapo, mbele, kidogo tu. But, hey, see your country go, eh? Baka nikashindwa, Kenya tuna barabara. Oh, that country is advanced. Um, it's a good nation. But somebody made a comment. He said, if Kenya allowed the Mzungu to stay a little longer, it would have been like Zimbabwe in terms of infrastructure or South Africa. I did not put an argument. But after a while, after I came back, I thought about some of those statements. You know, sometimes the devil can, we can get used to what the devil is doing around us until we, f we don't see when God comes. We can be pressed down by the enemy until all our comparisons have nothing to do with what God is doing. And that helped me to come to appreciate our nation. Hmm? Inchi ya Kenya ni poa sana. Umagara wone, if you want to know. Just do what I've said in that word. Umagara. Just go and you will learn a few things. And then you can appreciate the village that God Hata kama nyumba ni ya matope, you can appreciate what God has given you as a person, as a nation, so that I don't complain, I don't compare, and I don't mama, but I praise the name of the Lord. This is the month, this next two months we are talking about the Christian spiritual disciplines. And uh, those that have spoken before me have done very well. So, nina shikilia, nina dandia, what they have uh, introduced. And I want to talk about the word of God. And uh, I don't want to preach, I want to teach. I hope I can. I'll try my best. Um, be because... Everything that God does on this earth, he does it by his word and by his spirit. Everything that God will do in your life cannot be outside of those two. It is his word and his spirit. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible tells us, and that's where we first see these two at work at creation. The Spirit of God first hovered upon the surface of the deep. And then God released his word. Let there be light. And there was light. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the word of God and the Spirit, they work together. So what I would pray is that God, as I read your word, may you hover around. May the Spirit of the Lord hover around so that that word of God can bring life into my life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord was hoving around and as the Spirit of the Lord was hoving around, then God said, let there be. And there was. So outside his word, if you like, outside his word, there is nothing God will accomplish in your life. Outside his word. So the value that we should put more is in his word. Outside his word, nothing. Therefore, your attitude to the word of God will determine what God will accomplish in your life. Because Hebrews 11 verse 3 says, by faith we understand 
that the words were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made thing but are not made of things which are visible so it is that word of God that faith of the word of God it is God speaking i having faith i translate the word of God it becomes power to me it becomes provision to me blessed be the name of the lord so far so good so if your life is going to be properly framed the word of god and your attitude have to play a key role a key role may god help us therefore then how important is the word of god to you does it mean anything to you do you consider it crucial to your living when you hear the word of god in church or being preached on radio or television or you are reading your own bible what is the importance of the word of god because that is the the the, the key thing it is a discipline but how important is the word of god as i read it blessed be the name of the lord your answer then will tell a lot about where you are in life today and also the direction of your life your attitude to the word of god also tells me a lot about your relationship with god if you value god in your life then you will value his word the writer of psalms 119 and if you have time read psalms 119 and you hear it talking about the word of god In verse number 11 he says your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you your word I have hidden in my heart that I should not sin against you In verse 103 of the same 119 how sweet are your words to my taste sweeter than honey to my mouth the value of the word of God 148 The Bible says my eyes are awake through the night watches that I may meditate on your word the value that you put in the word of God Prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 15 verse 16 he says he ate the word and it became unto him the joy of rejoicing of his heart that is what the word of God does when you feed on it The lives of some people are not what they should be today because of the wrong words they are hearing the wrong words they are meditating so the question i want to ask is how important to you is the word of god because you hear rubbish you talk rubbish you hear dirty words you start talking about those dirty words you hear god and his holy word you start talking about god and his holy word what value do you have for the word of god job was another person that valued daily the word of god he says in job 23 and verse 12b i have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food in other words value of the word of god more than the food that job was eating how much do you value the word of god hallelujah So that was a good attitude to the word of God. For the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word of God. Every word that proceeds from his mouth, every word. In Deuteronomy 8 and verse number 3, the Bible is trying to help us understand that it is the word of God. It is what God has said and I put it in my heart. then it brings changes in my heart so he humbled you allowed you to hunger and feed you with a manner which you did not know nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god so what value do you have for the word of god what value do you have for the word of god how important is the word of god to you if the word of god is not important to you you will not know what god has spoken about how to live 
and also how to appropriate his promises. Because they are promises of God. And blessed are those that are able to pull them from the scripture and run with them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We can read the Bible and it becomes just like another newspaper. So how can you receive miracles from the almighty God from whom you have no regard for his word? How is God going to meet you at the point of your very need if you don't honor the very one that speaks about your need? How? You see, the Sadducees and the Pharisees in the book of Matthew, verse 20, chapter 22, verse 29, Jesus is talking to them and he's telling them, your biggest problem is the scripture. You know, when, when I hear and I see young people living together in the same house, sleeping together in the same house, then after some time they come to me, they want to be wedded, I wonder. Do you know the scriptures? Do you know what the scripture says about marriage? Do you know the, the, the ties that you keep on tying yourself? Do you know? So a lot of us, if we don't understand the scripture, we want to see the people and what the people do because they will tell you everybody is doing it. You are not everybody. You are yourself. You want to go to heaven yourself. Not everybody. Oh, it is being done by everybody. I am not everybody. I am born again today after 40, almost 50 years. Because when I said yes to the Lord, myself with the other boys, I don't care what they are doing, whether they fell by the wayside. But the Lord touched me. I want to pursue him. Do, do you understand the word of God? Does it make sense to you? Ama tumefika mahali, we don't want to go to heaven. We want to sing about it. Me, I want to go to heaven. My goodness. Hata afadhali nifike, binguni, niambiwa hakukuwa na bingu. Yeah, but I have lived a good life. Nisije nikafika huko na sina meno tatu. Meno yangu yote hiko. Se, mungina na pigwa ngumi huko. Wacha hii ya kuoza, hii ya kuoza ni ingine. Lakini mwingine ni ngumi ya lipigwa, haka meno ya kucheka. Sasa hakicheka, hameweka kegine hapo. Apana. The question is to you. Because if you mistake the word of God, if you fail to understand the word of God, because it is the word of God that speaks about my marriage, it is the word of God that speaks about my children, it is the word of God that talks about my future. It is the word of God that talks about my prosperity. It is the word of God that talks about my healing. It is the word of God that carries everything that I do. The word of God. Say my amen too. Bas, hallelujah. There is power in the word of God. Life outside the word of God is a disaster. Jesus likened hearing the word and not obeying it to a foolish man. And I pray that I will not be a fool. Foolish. Unajenga familia yako kwa matope na udongo. Vupepo ikikuja kale ka family kana haragana. Now build it on the rock, the word of God. Ili upepo ikija mnakaa ngumu. Chakula ikikosa mnakaa ngumu. I say. Ugonjwa ikikuja mnakaa ngumu. You are waiting upon God. Because you are built on a solid rock. If you are not, any, 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 any kasheka, any kakuoro asubui, morid, kakuoro kadogo ka asubui, ati uji uriweka chumbi nyingi, ungeriweka sukari na weke brubas, nakumbe ya kukua, rafu uze ya nasema, tunachana sahi, kwa brubas, build your, build your family on a rock. You know, Wengine mumekuja hii church. Sell hile unaenda. Siku moja tu wanakosa kupeana ndoma. Unakataa kuja uyo ushirika tena. Hati sitaenda ushirika tena. Uyo mama aliniangalia hivi nikaona hameficha ndoma tukienda afu atoe. My life is not on ndoma. No. The word of God. Value it. Honor it. Run for it. Pursue it. Don't pursue these other materials that we have around here. 
You know, we used to sing a song, which was very interesting, but in times of ignorance, God overlooked. But I discovered later on that with Jesus, I need everything. Yeah? Because I have Jesus, then I have everything. Because Jesus owns everything. But in terms of ignorance, God overlooked it for us. There is power in the word of God. And life outside the word of God is a disaster. We pray that God is going to help us to build on the rock. Don't receive the word of God as if it is the preacher's word. If you receive it as the word of the preacher, it will not affect you. But believe it as the word of God. Believe it and trust it and it will work effectively on you. 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 13. For this reason we also thank God without ceasing. Because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is the truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. May the word of God that you hear every Sunday work in you because you believe. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Value the word of God. Value the word of God. I said I want to to teach. I don't know whether I'm getting tempted to preach instead of teaching. You know, we get carried away. But hebu nirudi tena nione kama ninaweza fundisha kitu wewe unaweza beba. As Christians, many of us read our Bibles and pray. But are we meditating on God's word? And do we even know what the word of God means? Wacha nirudie tena. Wengine wetu tunasoma neno hata kuomba. Lakini neno linapita hata hatujui maana yake. No wonder anybody can come and tell us the meaning of that word. We went to a funeral in Kangundo. And the father there that day he decided not to preach, but to tell us why the Catholics, they do the things they do. We were there, we listened. Why they pray to this. But the, one, the only thing that excited me is when he said, in our days, we allow our members to read the word. And I thought, yeah, because when they read the word, they will understand they will know there is some truth in the word of God. The truth of the word of God will put light into them. But as long as people are telling you, then you keep on believing. You know, in this country, there are people who never read the constitution. When we went around telling people the constitution was bad, there are people who never read it. They said, Kama fulani amesema, 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 sisi atuezi soma, viri amesema divyo irivyo. After many years, they come back and they say that Katiba was not right. I say, wa Kenya. Vijana walizuka na wako hapa. Si mume occupy. Si vijana mume occupy. Jinsi si ninaona mume occupy. Na melenio occupy. But I heard one of them say this. We went on the streets. But the people who got the seats is not us. That's a statement. When the Lord called Joshua in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and 9, he tells Joshua something like this. Moses, my servant, has died. So, the shocker is, you know, Moses alikuwa mepanda kwa mlima. So everybody was waiting for him down. So God comes and tells Joshua Kuja, the guy who went up is dead. Harudi. Ilikuwa funeral yake uko juu na harudi. So Joshua, anastruggle na mambo, anakustruggle, alafu anambio na mungu goja. Before you struggle, Listen. 
This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and good courage. Don't be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. But this verse 9 is an emphasis of what verse 8 is. When we meditate upon God's word, we will not be dismayed, we will not be discouraged, we will not be afraid because we are going to hear what God has said in verse number 8. The law of the Lord. That's where it starts. Meditate upon the word of God. Meditation has three activities. And I want you to write this one. Activity number one, shut out the world. Number two, shut ourselves up to God. Number three, focus our attention on the passage of scripture. So if I'm going to meditate upon God's word then, I'm going to shut out the world. This means no television, no phone, no calls, or other things outside. When I say for this one hour, it is me and the word. You lock the world outside. Number two, you lock in yourself in that world, you and God, Apple. Then you focus on that word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You shut yourself up to God. Meditation is not a group activity, but it is a private time alone with the Lord. Peke yako na mungu. Peke yako na mungu. Salimia jirani yako. Mamia jirani. Nasikia bishop vile nasema. Peke yako na mungu. Families that you are here, it does not work. Meditation cannot work when you tell your wife to meditate. Muna meditate ni na yeye. Meditate neno lako wewe. So many bibiria, lakini wewe meditation musikai hapa to, to meditate. Meditate it. Ask yourself a few questions. Take a pen, take a pencil. Sit down and ask yourself many things that you're going to ask. What is this word of God trying to tell me as a person? Don't make it a Bible study. Bible study has got its room. You can study with your spouse. But I'm talking about meditation. Meditation, see a group. Say my amen. Bas. So that you can focus your attention on a passage of scripture. This is not just a casual reading of God's word before heading out of the door. But it is a private conversation with the Lord. We begin by asking him to reveal what he wants to say to us. Then we listen to his instruction and guidance while reading, while thinking, while praying about the scripture. So here I am, I'm preaching to you. You pick that word, go somewhere with a piece of paper, meditate upon it. Ask yourself a few things. If the preacher did not tell you what the word meant, ask the scripture yourself a few questions and it is going to answer to you. Did you get what I said? I said I was, I was trying to teach. I said three things. I said what? Ujifungie? Amwambia jirani yako. Si unisaidie kuhubiri. Nilisema shut what? The word out. Dunia inje. And then tukasema shut what? Yourself na nani? Na mungu. Alafu tukasema focus up yourself. Meditation has four requirements. If I'm going to walk in this discipline, if this is the direction that I'm going to go, there are things that I'm going to do. There are things that I'm going to do. And there are four of them. Number one, priority. The devil will try to thwart our efforts to focus on God's word because he knows we are absorbing it into our souls. If meditation is not a priority in our lives, we probably won't do it. When is the last time you meditated upon the word of God? When? No answers. I can see it on your faces. It's like, it has never happened. Oh, may God help us. It's a discipline that we want to start. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you are not late. 
You can start today. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But give the word of God priority. Priority. Kidogo tuchukua Biblia one hour. Kaa kando na kitabu. Read the word of God. Let it have meaning to you. So the first place is priority. The second one is place. Don't tell me you are watching Olympics and you are meditating. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me the music Ron Kenoli is singing and you are meditating. Don't tell me. Don't tell me your grandchildren are jumping up and down and you are meditating. Don't tell me. Because we need a place. We need a private place where we can meet alone with God. We can even call it an altar where you go to meet with God. Make it a habit. Create a place. Just sit there. And just read the scriptures. We were told about one thing, one thing here by Samuel also. And uh, I, I'm practicing it. Now you see meditation. Iyo ni kusikiza. Unafugulia. Unaenda mahali ni wewe tu unafugulia. Na unaweka vitu kwa, kwa masikio. Neno linakuja, neno linakuja. Somebody said, Uka dhudhi ruogi nyo wakakoma. May God help you. You know, you don't need drugs. You need the word of God. And the word of God is so rich. That is not meditation. It's just hearing the word of God. But you take a step further, get an hour, get a few minutes, just read the word of God. But you need a place. So what, do, what are we saying? Priority. And number two, we, we get a place. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Number three, purpose. The purpose of meditation is to hear from the Lord. So when we concentrate on his word and seek his guidance, he sometimes uses very specific passages of scripture to answer our request. And once we have understood what he told us, our trust in him increases and our worry loosens. Yeah. Do you know if When, when you think about the Jinsi, because I don't know whether they have finished their work yet, when they came to Zimmerman, tell your neighbor Zimmerman, tear gas, people were crying in church here. Alice was in church. Tear gas. Tear gas. Tear gas. Kama ujaonja tear gas, don't look forward to it. Don't. Sio kitu tamu. Sio raha. Uzikubali ikugonge macho. But when those things are happening as believers, what are we called to do? We are called to know there is a God who has better plans for this country including those young people. He has a better plan for this country. We also know the devil wants to kill and to destroy our nation. So where do I stand? I want to meditate on God's word that tomorrow is better than my yesterday. And if only my yesterday is better, then there is something wrong about my faith in God. Then there, I have missed the word for today. I need the word for today. This morning in our prayer, with Alice, around five. Ilikuwa hivi. Kwamba, lazima tushukuru hii siku ni ya mungu. Hii siku ni ya mungu. Na kwa sababu ni ya mungu, lazima tushukuru. Tutafute njia moja ya kushukuru. Jana nilianguka. Watu wakafikiria ni kuchengwa nilichengwa na Alice. Nilianguka tu. Wazee mko hapa msianguke. Na waomba msianguke. Because when I woke up I told her I cannot preach. 
because of how I was feeling the whole day hata karibu niende kwa daktari nasikia uchungu kwanza pale nikiamka uchungu kali alipoomba akanishoshora akaniuliza umeombe akanipigia hapa umepigia mtu mwingine akusaidie kuburi nikamwambia nishapona si ni siku ya kwenda to rejoice in the lord for what he has done i will get there na ni, nimekuwa niki, niki, nikitafuta kwa uchungu ninashindwa kwani tumekawacha pale ya yeah, kakae hapo na nikirudi hapo sikachuku the purpose of meditation is to hear from the lord and when we concentrate on his word we seek his guidance we seek his guidance and sometimes he will use some specific passages of scripture or specific prayers that will be made towards you but then it will be up to you to receive that and run with it blessed be the name of the lord so we have said priority place and purpose and then number four, plan we must set aside the time to meet with the lord to read the word ask for the direction and listen for his voice this opportunity to be alone with him will soon become the most precious part of each day as we learn to know what god the almighty is thinking about me I said I'm teaching. So, take some notes. Meditation will include three things. Eh, leo nimewapatia vitu 3 4 sio vitu mingi. Na wengine hata unaniangalia tu hata hakuna kitu unaandika. Wewe sio computer ati umetipu uko it will be deleted. Kitoka pale upate simu nyingine kama nikiwa hapa nimepata simu ya security kwetu hapa hapa sasa ninaweza shindwa ni moto umewaka nikimbie nje sio ni distraction so what you do unaizima kama kuna moto uwake ukishamaliza kile unamaliza tutaenda kujua ni nini imebaki ai ati hapana uelewi bishop hiyo ni very important ni besha agwetere ile zikae there are three things number one, i would say this if you want the word of god to have meaning to you do some something we call observation observation can, can we have james chapter 1 verse 1 to 4 James chapter 1 verse 1 to 4 James a born servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greetings verse 2 my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials verse 3 knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience verse 4 but let patient have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete lack nothing so if you read that scripture you will sit by asking yourself the first question who is the writer to whom is he writing for what is the passage saying hiyo tu did you hear what i said so you go back to it and you are nani anaandika anaitwa james anaandikia akina nani watu wako scattered all over the place si si homa hiyo ni bible school nimekupeleka bible school na nimekufundisha kitu ya kwanza yeah, observation read it and ask yourself those very simple questions you are asking yourself who is the writer to whom is writing to and what is the passage saying the passage is saying something but it is in verse number 4 but unless you start by analyzing inaandikiwa nani kwa sababu gani wako wapi they are scattered meaning there was persecution may god help us that every time we read a scripture we observe fungua macho angalia tena wacha kuku unajua kuna wengine ukisoma unafunga hapana if it is meditation you are doing fungua uliza wewe swali moja angalia tena 
hii maandiko imeandikiwa wa kikuyu ama ni wabukusu ujiulize maswali ujiulize ni nani aliandika ni kimani eh nani aliandika jiulize maswali aliandikia nani what was happening there na ujumbe ni nini because hiyo ni ngumu i told you i'm teaching you hiyo ni ngumu kweli kukaa tu ku read james chapter 1 verse 1 to 4 ujiulize hayo maswali kutoka pale wewe utakuwa theologian oh thank god for the theologians in church today so verse 1 says the right the letter was written by james and so on so we understand who wrote it and the thing is he there were people that were scattered because of trials that was happening so after observation what do i do number two, interpret it tell your neighbor you need to interpret the scripture ah sasa hapa ndio kinauma kinaumana you want somebody else to interpret it for you before they do it try to interpret the scripture for yourself what does the passage mean and what can we learn from it hiyo ndio interpretation ile passage nimesoma inamaanisha nini na nitajifundisha nini inamaanisha there are trials na nifanye nini majaribio ikija ni wache kulalamika kwanza ni hesabu kuna furaha pale ndani kwa sababu itanipatia patience uvumilivu so i interpret the scripture that there are hardship but i need to understand that in all this god is going to help me to come out so verse 2 is like the interpretation he says consider it all, all joy my brethren when you encounter various trials in the midst of difficulties or suffering we want relief from pain and a way out of hardship but james says the solution is to change our attitude instead of becoming bitter or resentful we are to count it as joy not because we enjoy the experience but because we know that god is sovereign over it and he promises to walk through with us through it so our joy is that in the lord kuwe na maandamano in the lord kuwe na kiangazi in the lord niwe na upungufu in the lord niwe na navigator in the lord niwe widu in the lord sina kazi but in the lord yani mambo yako yote ni kuweka bwana pale bwana yesu asifiwe verse number 3 knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance that's the key you are interpreting the scripture au na haraka i told you you are taking a whole hour there looking at the scripture that you are reading know that the testing of your life and then verse 4 and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing you know shida yetu kubwa ni wakati kuna kashida kadogo. Hebu salimia jirani yako. Umwambie hakuna familia haina shida. Hata hiyo unafikiria iko na shida. Hiyo unaonaga waki wakizoom na magari ina shida hiyo. Hiyo. Ati hiyo. Ati wewe kwa magoto kukakuwa na gari. Hiyo ina shida zake. Every place has a problem. So nikikosa ugali siku moja au lenjua Unajua kuna watu wengine tu ni siku moja tu alafu unaona mtu amesema huyu anipendi jana tuliambiwa na mtu ule malaika ulikuwa unamuita malaika sawa unamuita witch kama ye ni witch we ni wizard au ndio anaitaka pamoja if she was an angel she will always be an angel the problem <laughs> si nilikwambia mtu akikuita ngombe wewe mwambie the last time you looked at yourself in the mirror wewe uliona una pembe kwa hivyo wewe ndio wako na shida ya focus aende ategenezwe focus because kama nimepata pembe kwanza wanaume ati wewe mjinga kama sijui nini eh hiyo ujinga ni wewe umemfanya awe mjinga ulimwao uli akiwa malaika ati i loved your voices i love your words the way you spoke you know i looked at you and i oh my goodness 
and all of a sudden you are a witch tumekuja kuniroga mimi na kunirogea watoto nikuzalie watoto atena niwe ni mimi kuna shida hapo interpret the scripture wacha ku <laughs> angalia maandiko you know there are some of us here if somebody proposes to marry you first of all you refuse because somebody has told you you are not marryable i say kuna mtu hapa anaweza patiwa kazi kubwa aseme hapana mimi wacha niendeshe driver tu mimi nataka kuwa tu kwa gatekeeper kuwa gatekeeper ukipewa kazi chukua yeah wacha nikasomee huko mbele ati kwetu kwetu yule anakuwa mkubwa sana ni akiwa mkubwa wa supervisor wa security officers wale wengine wale wako hapo huyu ni mtu mkubwa sana kwa hivyo ukikuwa promoted upewe ofisi unasema ofisi hapana patia yule let me tell you kama kuna kitu unataka kupewa na hutaki si unipe si umwambie tu Mungu patia bishop because i'm ready for it <laughs> wow nayo time nayo ikiwa darasani inaendaga hivi ai inaendaga mbaya mpaka inafika pale unakuta wewe hauna wakati but let me finish by saying application so what did we say you do observation then you do what you interpret it then let's do the application maybe some other time we'll do the response so that i don't keep you here for long i told you i just wanted to teach you so that you can try it because it works application based on what you have just learned how should we respond how does god wants us to think about our trials the following are a few specific practices to help us rejoice even in troubles or when we are suffering number one, we continue meditating on this passage until it becomes real in our thinking and belief system yani trials thankful in trials when i have pain thankful in those pains trying to find god in those trials and pains as i continue meditating on that it becomes a part of me i'm able now to appreciate what god is doing instead of running away there are some kuna wengine hapa umekaa ngumu eh toka sitoki natoka niende wapi basi mko pale tu mnaangaliana tu na mmeangaliana sasa miaka kumi eh na alikuwa amekwambia miaka kumi utoke eh kwa hivyo haikuwa hakuwa serious na hata yeye hakutoka kwa hivyo nimesuku you know unaweza enda nje usikie story za watu uje kufanya kwako hebu Mungu akusaidie uache hizo mambo whatever you see outside don't but meditate meditate because once we truly believe this we will be able to confidently face whatever we are going through in other words if i can convince myself that there is something in my trials or in the trials like james is saying then when trials come to me then i'll be able to help myself and help others you see the bible talks about comfort those that are, are mourning with the comfort that you yourself have received because the, the whole idea is kama hapa sasa hakuna mtu hajafiwa hapa hapa hii church yetu hii ni church poa sana hebu salimia jirani yako mwambie hata wewe umefiwa eh uka wako hayuko wengine hatuna wazazi wote i mean <laughs> story ndio hiyo eh wengine ni ndugu yako dada yako tumefiwa The comfort that you received then what God wants you to do is to take the same one and comfort another one with. The trials that I've gone through as I go through then I'm supposed to help somebody else with it. But I have to continue reading what James is saying and uh, taking it into myself and believe that what God is saying is true that I'm going to endure and I will have patience and when patience has taken its own course 
there is something that God is going to do. If I believe and something happens, then I'll be able to help somebody else. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Number two, continually affirm that unconditionally. In other words, I'm not loved by God because everything is well. I'm loved by God in spite of or despite of. Mungu ananipenda. Mwambie jirani yako Mungu anampenda. Na hakupendi kwa sababu unatendaga mema, anakupenda. Ukashika ule upendo wake na ukatalie pale. Siku moja utaambia wengine kuhusu ule upendo. Knowing that he always does what is best for us increases my trust and faith in God. When my mother died and I was there and I saw she has gone. Si dunia ili siri niishia pale because of the effort. Nimembreka hospitali, hakuwa mgonjwa, ametoka hospitali, yeye ni mzima, anafurahi sana, vika wake anakuja, alafu 5 minutes after that anakwenda. I say but you know, because of the comfort that I had received from others, though I mourned and cried, I was able to soak it in and know that God loves me. Na mimi siwa wakwanza ambaye mama yake ya meenda. Na sita kuwa wamwisho. Iyo siyo samo ni ya leo. Samo ni ya leo ni neno. Eh? Unajua mnaweza saa mkanza kukweza mabisho pari ubiri abari ya kifo na mauti ya pana? Neno. Meditate upon God's word and get to the point where you believe. This is God and God has something for me even what I'm, when I'm going through I will trust him. Ask the Lord to show us what specific areas of our lives he is targeted for our spiritual growth. The application is to ask God what areas? What areas am I suffering? What areas can I suffer? What areas should I be ready for? And that will help me as I make uh, reading God's word as a discipline. And finally, agree with God that the end result is worthy the pain. Whatever he allows us to go through is for our benefit. So meditating is then gratifying and it is rewarding. It's a good experience that increases our intimacy with God. Oh, that I pray that we will not only read God's word, but you can get time to read God's word and meditate upon it by having a paper before you so that you can observe it, you can interpret it, you can apply it. Amen? So that this word of God, you can look at it and ask yourself a few questions. Who has written it? To who? What is the message? You ask yourself those things. And I'm telling you, our church is going to be better. Because not every wind of doctrine can sweep us. We want to pursue those disciplines of spiritual Christians. Disciplines that we can do it wherever we are. Father, we want to thank you this morning. The discipline of your word. We pray, dear Father, that we are going to hide your word in our hearts. So that we will not sin against you. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.